North Korea is a country of 25 million people who live completely cut off from the world, under the iron rule of one family since 1948. It has virtually no economy to speak of, and yet pursues a robust nuclear weapons program. What keeps the so-called hermit kingdom going? Let's ask 10 questions of Nicholas Eberstadt, the Henry Wendt Chair in Political Economy at the American Enterprise Institute, and a longtime student of the DPRK, North Korea. He recently testified before the United States Senate Committee on Foreign Relations on ways to contain escalating threats from that nation. And Nicholas joins us now from Washington, D.C. Here we go, Nicholas. Question one. Thank you. Kim Jong-nam, the eldest son of the former leader of North Korea and the half-brother of the current one, was assassinated in Kuala Lumpur. What do you read into that? Uh, it certainly looks like a uh, North Korean Reconnaissance Bureau hit job. If it wasn't uh, authorized by his uh, brother, the dear respected uh, Kim Jong-un, there are some mobsters in Southeast Asia who know how to do a very good job of faking it. Hmm. Question two. On February 12th, North Korea tested a new medium long-range ballistic missile. Was that, in your view, a message for your new president? Uh, partly it was a, a welcome to office message for uh, President Trump, but they'd have to be testing their missiles anyhow. Uh, they need to perfect the science package uh, of, of long-term and medium-term missiles to be able to threaten the United States with uh, destruction from the air. Question three. After the latest missile test, China announced that it would suspend all coal imports from North Korea until the end of the year. How do you think this will be received by the North Korean political leadership? Well, maybe China front-loaded its shipments for the year. Uh, the Chinese government has a miserable record of serving as an honest broker in the North Korea problem. Question four. In 1999, you wrote a book that was called The End of North Korea. We're 18 years later, and North Korea is still here. What's happened? Well, uh, my imagination only goes so far. Uh, never in my dreams would I have guessed that the South Korean government with a sunshine pro uh, policy would come to the financial rescue of a staggering North Korean state. And no more would I have possibly imagined that the South Korean government would have uh, convinced the U.S. and Japan to help bail them out, too. <laughs> Question five. As we suggested, you testified before the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, and you said that the failure to contain North Korea is due to the inability of us to understand the hermit kingdom. What is it about Amer American leaders that you feel means they don't get North Korea? Well, for good or for ill, American leaders are children of the Enlightenment. I suppose some may be children of postmodernism. Uh, but be that as it may, uh, that universe has absolutely no set of common coordinates with the mindset of a dynastic leadership uh, supported by Stalin-style terror. Just can't imagine how a system like that operates. Well, let's follow up. In question six, I ask, in what way is racism part of the ideology that has managed to command the obedience of 25 million North Koreans for so long? I'm so glad you asked that, because that's neglected or not known about outside of North Korea in so many circles. There is a virulent racism. Uh, the Korean word for race is minjok. There is a focus upon the Korean race and upon the awful uh, qualities of the enemy races with which the DPRK contends. Uh, one hasn't seen the sort of vile, racist filth that comes out of North Korean propaganda anywhere else in the world since Julius Streicher was sentenced to death at the Nuremberg trials. Hmm. Question seven. You have said that North Korea is going to continue to test its nuclear missiles until it is satisfied that it can hit New York or Washington. And I wonder whether you are convinced that they are prepared for a nuclear response. The, uh, the North Korean leadership, I believe, has been methodically preparing to fight and win a limited nuclear war against the United States in the Korean Peninsula and preparing for this for decades. This does not mean anticipating large-scale nuclear exchanges. 
It means hoping they can get Uncle Sam to blink in a showdown in the Korean Peninsula, at which point the U.S. ROK military alliance crumbles and American soldiers get out of the peninsula. Hmm. In which case, question eight, does President Trump have a North Korea policy that you can tell is different from any of his predecessors? Well, um, President, uh, President Trump uh, talked about North Korea on the campaign trail in certain different sorts of ways. He talked about having a hamburger with Kim Jong-un. He talked about having the Chinese kill Kim Jong-un. There's a policy uh, review that's supposed to be underway now. Maybe the two different uh, alternatives will get uh, sorted out. <laughs> Question nine. How would South Korea like the North Korea story to end? That's an excellent question. There's enormous ambivalence in South Korea, in the ROK today, about North Korea. On the one hand, it's a huge uh, threat, an existential threat to the South. On the other hand, the prospect of reforming and financing the reconstruction of a united Korea is terrifying. Um, there are many people in the South who would, I think, prefer to have somebody else answer that question for them, but I'm not sure they're going to be able to take a holiday from history. Hmm. And finally, question 10, is it conceivable in your view that at some point in the near future, North Koreans could rise up and throw this dictatorship out? Uh, I don't know. But then again, in uh, October of 1989, I didn't know what was going to happen in East Germany next month. One of the things about a closed totalitarian system is that outsiders are the very last to know what's going on until something has happened. Hmm. Nicholas Everstadt from the American Enterprise Institute, we always value your contributions to our program. Come visit us again, okay? Thank you so much. It's a pleasure for me. Help TVO create a better world through the power of learning. Visit TVO.org and make a tax-deductible donation today.